Hello, Fort Wainwright. I'm Colonel Jason Cole at the helm of U.S. Army Garrison, Alaska. Today, we're going to talk about snow removal. It's a mission as critical as any in ensuring our readiness and operational effectiveness. I'm joined by three tactical experts in this field. Matt Taylor from Department of Public Works, Abby West from Mainscape Incorporated, and Felicia Jackson, our strategic planner from Plans, Training, Mobilization, and Security. Together, we'll navigate the logistics and strategies of keeping our roads, streets, and parking lots battle ready against the snow. First up, we have Matt from DPW. Welcome, Matt. Morning, sir. Glad to be here. Hey, Matt, can you give us a strategic overview of the snow removal mission here at Fort Wainwright? How extensive is this operation? Uh, we cover an awful lot of ground, sir. We've got 126 lane miles here on Fort Wainwright proper. Lane miles is, if you have 20 miles of road, that's 40 lane miles. We also do the YTA and DTA and some of the, uh, some of the training ranges across the street on the small arms complex. Uh, we've got parking lots. Uh, we have uh, non-org and organizational parking lots. And in the event of a six inch or greater snowfall on a single event, the contractor will go through and do a double pass through lane for every parking lot to facilitate movement here on Wainwright. Yeah, that sounds expensive. Uh, it's and, one... and takes a long time. <laughs> you, do you want to know the numbers? No, I don't, I don't <laughs> want to know the numbers, but uh, yeah, so if, you, if we were to do all 126 lane miles, mm -hmm. you know, how long would that take? Just one pass. One pass, we can get it done, barring any complications, in 24 to 36 hours. Okay, that's um, good to know. Yeah. So speaking of time, but in terms of operational timeline, you know, when do we initiate this mission, and what's the objective time frame for a completion? So the trigger event is two, two inches. Two inches on the roadways, and the contractor gets called out, and they start executing. They have 24 hours from the last snowflake falling to complete the mission. So maintaining clear roads is vital for troop movement and as well as people, you know, going to and from work and, you know, for our school buses to come and get our kids to school. You know, how can our community support the operation, you know, for specifically clearing parking lots? For parking lots can be a, a difficult one for the contractor to accomplish. Uh, when they start executing parking lots, the building managers or barracks managers, depending on, on the facility, are notified 72 hours in advance. They're supposed to put it out to the people who utilize that facility. There will be yellow sandwich boards put up 72 hours in advance. And the day of execution is where things get a little sketchy, especially with barracks. Barracks we try to do during the daytime because in theory, Soldiers would be at work. Uh, it doesn't always work that way. There's also uh, a lot of <clears throat> abandoned in place vehicles that are left behind in parking lots. It makes it very difficult for the contractor to be effective at removing snow. Yeah, plus you've got soldiers out in the field and they've probably rode with yes. friends to, you know, before they went deployed. And so. When we do the 72 hour notification, we can figure out the field thing. Right? That part is not as big a deal but if a soldier's at school yeah. or on leave or absent for whatever reason and no one polices up that vehicle, then there's a risk of damaging that vehicle and or damaging the multi-million dollar equipment that the contractor uses. Yeah. So. Okay. Yeah, so I'm hearing safety is a paramount concern here. Absolutely. So, you know, what should our personnel be aware of? regarding now gravel spreading and snow clearing operations, especially out on the roads? On the roads, uh, gravel clearing, if you, see, if you see snow clearing operations, you have to assume, or you should assume, that there is gravel spreading operations happening, happening simultaneously. Having said that, anytime you see the flashing lights, you should react properly, whether it's emergency vehicles or, or construction, and, as it is in this case. Keep your distance slow down you get a grader out there that weighs 20 tons he can't stop on a dime so he, you cut in front of him he or she will do their best but don't don't risk it just slow down and pay attention and yeah is it like uh when you're on the highway with 18 wheelers you know you want to be able to far enough back where you can see the mirror you can sort of see yes. the driver in the mirror 
That way you know he can see you and he knows you're back there? Yes, absolutely. The more distance you have, the better off. And that is a good rule of thumb. If you can see their driver or their mirrors, they can probably see you. There are some exception, exceptions to that. You can get very, very close to a grader and still see his mirrors. Still not a good idea. Keep your distance best okay. you can. All right. Yeah, thanks. I Keep think your someone, distance and slow down. Yeah, someone explained it to me. Don't crowd the plow. Whatever that means don't to you. Crowd don't, the plow. don't crowd the plow. That so. sounds like a saying we can pass around. Yeah, I think so. I think we're going to put it up on a sign. All right. Thanks, Matt. Yeah, I appreciate it. Now we're going to pivot to the home front, our residential areas. Uh, joining us is Abby West, who commands the snow clearing operations in our family housing areas. Welcome to the briefing, Abby. Thank you, Colonel. So, Abby, uh, just some background. You know, I'm new up here to Alaska, just getting here, you know, in July before the, the snow started falling. Please tell me you're a lifelong Alaska. Well, I've been here 30 years, so most of my life. Okay. Well, it's <laughs> longer than me. So, uh, <laughs> so I'm guess 30 years, you've got some good experience with snow and, and, and how they do things up here in Alaska at Fort Wainwright. Yes. Okay. So what can you tell us about Mainscape in our, in our residential housing areas? Uh, Mainscape uh, clears the snow in all the residential areas. Uh, that means the roadways and the parking lots. Um, and we're just trying to get the roads safe so that our residents can travel safely to work or school or wherever they need to get. Okay. So uh, when does your team mobilize for snow clearing in our neighborhoods? Our trigger is at two inches of snow. Um, but we kind of look at the forecast and our priority is safety. So sometimes we might make a practical decision to go a little before or after, just depending on what's going on. Okay, that's great. Um, and can you describe sort of your approach, how Mainscape employs, you know, the equipment that you have to, to clear the residential areas? Well, when we determine, when we dispatch our crews out, we send out, um, crew members to every neighborhood at once. Uh, we have 10 tr pickup trucks with snow plows on them, a road grader, two loaders, and two skid steers. And they go out to all the neighborhoods and they clear our roadways and our sidewalks first. And then we will go back and do the parking lots and we shovel all the mailboxes, hydrants, and dumpster pads. When we do that, we might leave a little berm at the end of your driveway. It just, it's hard to, to avoid. That's okay, I drive over it. <laughs> yeah, that's okay too. Um, well, we will return and we'll clean it up uh, before we leave for the day. So sometimes you might just need to give us a little time. We'll come back and get that. And if we don't, just give North Haven a call and they will send us out to go get it for you. Okay. I've also got a 16 year old who I think can go out and help. But, but <laughs> on that note, you know, what can residents do to assist in these operations? Uh, when there's a snow event, it's very helpful for residents to move their vehicles off the road whenever possible. Possible, um, just take them off the road, put them in your driveway, and uh, that way we can be more efficient and we can do a better job, which makes the road safer for everybody. Okay. Um, I was asked a question the other day about uh, our snow hills that we've been, you know, as you've moved the snow off the off the streets and the cul-de-sacs that are out there, you kind of put the put the snow somewhere in a snow hill. What can you tell me about the snow hills? Are they are they going to go or are they going to stay? They're going to get to 20, 30 feet or just grow massive in width and depth. Uh, we do return back to clear up the where we've stockpiled the snow piles. We prioritize when we go get them as the busyness of the roadway. And then also we want to uh, try to remove obstructions to vision so that people can see when they're entering an intersection. So we will return out there uh, to get them throughout the year. We just keep working on it as we go. One thing I would like to mention about the piles is please discourage your kids from playing on them. I know it's lots of fun, but it's very dangerous. Um, we do check the piles before we remove the, the pile, but God forbid we, we miss you know, a kid in there, that would be awful, or they can collapse as well. And there's just so many great places to enjoy the snow. Um, we'd like to have people discourage their kids from those piles. Yeah, a long time ago, uh, back in the 90s, Last time I got to play with snow was in Vermont, but it was a different type of snow. It was sort of that, that wet snow that you could pack down and do snow caves. 
and we used to do snow caving a lot. Um, you know, I've seen the kids out with that pile, you know, outside uh, outside my house trying to dig down into that, but I know it's a, it's a little bit different type of snow. It's, to me, there seems to be less moisture in the snow. So if you're not doing the appropriate measures of the snow cave to make sure it's actually reinforced, um, it seems to me like there is a higher risk there as kids are digging into those snow banks for it to actually collapse on them, especially, I mean, once they're out of sight, they're kind of out of mind you know, for the <laughs> parents out there playing and, you know, you think they're just sledding down the hill. So, you know, thank you for removing those. And to me, it just seems like you, you need a place, you know, over time to keep, uh, when you're clearing the roads, the roadways and the parking lots to actually put that snow. And if we didn't remove it, take it somewhere else, you, you run out of spots to put snow there and actually keep our roadways open. Does that sound about right? Yeah, it's just a temporary staging area. Um, you know, that's what we consider it, just temporary. Okay. Anything else you'd like us to know, Abby? Um, just another uh, thing that uh, is unsafe is when residents shovel out into the road as opposed into their yard. Um, we try to gather up that up when we see it, but... Um, it can create a hump and, you know, someone could get in an accident or, you know, their car could cream or something like that. Um, but so we recommend residents do not shovel into the road and instead shovel into their yard. So shovel width wise, not lengthwise. Yeah. There you All go. right. Yeah. It's just more passes for me. But I guess that's more exercise. So I appreciate that. <laughs> well, thanks for coming, Abby. I appreciate it. Thank you. Uh, Mainscape really likes this opportunity to be able to serve our military members. Our goal is try to make it more like home here for them by making it safer and more beautiful. So well, we appreciate that. And thank <laughs> you for uh, serving our community. Thank you. Now for a broader strategic perspective on snow removal, let's uh, bring in Felicia Jackson. Uh, Felicia, how do we prioritize and execute the this essential winter mission? And what's the difference between primary and secondary roads for snow removal? Great question. So the primary and secondary roads are broken out into exactly, just exactly what it sounds like. Primary roads are like Gaffney, Montgomery, Meridian, those primary roads that, that most of the tra um, tra traffic travels on. Those are continuously kept clean and uh, snow is removed from them often. The secondary roads are those other ones like Alder, some toward the Gates River Road, the bigger roads, and then there are tertiary roads that lead into the housing areas but not go into the housing area manscape priorities. And so with those, working with the uh, units along the installation, the coordination was determined on what are primary and secondary roads based off in mission requirements throughout. So everyone was in agreement on what ones needed to be done at all times. Okay, thank you. Um, so earlier when we had Abby in here, you know, she mentioned that sidewalks are cleared by the contractor for the accompanied housing areas, but that is not the case for the rest of the post, correct? Oh, that is correct. And that is our number one question that always comes in. Sidewalk snow removal is always a hot topic for even our, our customer front-based services, such as the MPD building, 3401, Continuing Education Center. No, that is the building occupant's responsibility, working through their supervisors to come up with different courses of action on how to get those, snow, those sidewalks cleared of snow when needed, particularly when it's heavy fall, keeping it sanded and graveled as needed in that. And so one of the things that is asked at the time is if the building managers can get salt, gravel, snow shovels, and ice chippers from DPW, that's not the case for work facilities. It is for residents, though. Residents can absolutely go to self-help and get those items, but buildings cannot. Even building 1555 does not. So that has to be purchased in the building manager's plan fund, the units that are within that building. Winner's not a surprise. So they should always plan out for that. So in the summertime is a great time to get good deals on shovels and all of that other stuff that you need for maintaining your sidewalks. Yeah. Hey, Felicia, remind us again how long you've been here doing this job or how long you've been at Fort Wainwright pre and doing this job. So I stationed here in 96 and I've been in this exact job going on 20 years in February. Okay. So with that amount of experience, 
What are some other frequent questions you get asked that you've had over the last 20 years and then some may maybe have asked yourself when you were here back in the 90s as a soldier? Um, what are some of the other frequently asked questions we get on this? It's you know, why, why isn't snow removed as soon, you know, each and every time across the entire installation, particularly like the commissary parking lot, driving those shopping carts out, you know, it gets bumpy, the gravel turns all the wheels, and especially when you've got children in car seats and things like that. And so that is, again, what we do as a team is synchronize what needs to be done when, and that's primarily what my job is. The contract is a, is, is a great contract, and they do super good at keeping the primary roads cleared and a lot of the secondary roads cleared, but it's based on the amount of snow that comes in. Um, there's so many variables that play into it. The amount of snow that comes in, what mission requirements are out there, because sometimes the PX is not the most important if we've got some real world deployments going on and we have to get those motor pools cleaned out if they have to get helicopters out of the hangars and they need help with getting the aprons cleared. What a lot of people don't realize is the airfield is included in main post and so those miles that are included in that contract include the airfield, which is significant. So if needed, and there's nothing going on with the airfield, we can deviate those assets from the airfield with your approval, stating, hey, I recommend we don't do the airfield. We don't have any mission requirements for the next five days. We can move those assets to get some more of the secondary and even maybe uh, motor pools that have mission requirements that are a higher priority completed to include the PX parking lot, which was done four times last year. Okay, yeah, that's good info. I work in an office, you work in an office. Who is out there, basically our scouts on the road every day, you know, feeding us information on road conditions out there, besides the community with ice comments and, and phone calls that we get? Yeah. <laughs> So we primarily, D Directorate of Emergency Services, they are the ones that take into account all of the main post roads to come up with the road conditions. And so that there's a colorful matrix out there, red, green, amber, black, that we use for road conditions. And they're the ones that assess that. And again, there's tons of variables that go into it. It is how wet or slick the ice built up, whether the gravel trucks from DPW have already been out, whether snow removal has started and or cleared, whether the piles have been picked up. So they do all of that assessment. And then within plans and operations, my office in that, we have several that go out and spot check different areas. But all of the units will call in if they are having issues, and that is how we determine on where the priorities need to go. One of the big things that individuals have to remember is if there is a mission requirement going on, say, on South Post, over by the, the Dyna facility area, and all of our equipment is on this side, we will clear other prioritized areas along the way to get to the Dyna facility so that we don't waste that asset. And we try not to bounce from south to north. We try to make a deliberate plan on that. So every time there is a snow event, that is what my office's job is, is to sit there and collectively work with the S3s, the operations officers, to determine what's needed. Okay. Yeah. Thank you for doing that. And thank you to all of our listeners for uh, listening to, the, to this podcast. You know, this briefing on snow removal operations at Fort Wainwright is just one example on how we maintain readiness and operational effectiveness in all conditions. So stay warm, stay safe. And remember, every one of us plays a vital role in the success of our mission here. So thanks again and look out for our next podcast.